can women actually gain as much muscle as men? Well, that's what this recently pre-printed meta-analysis by Rafao and colleagues suggests. Let me explain. Welcome back, Dr. Milo Wolf here, PhD in sports science, breaking down the latest research on differences between the sexes in terms of how much muscle and strength they can gain from lifting weights. What prompted me to make this video was the publication of a recent meta-analysis by Rafao and colleagues looking at differences between men and women and how they respond to a given training program. How much muscle do men versus women really gain? They looked at all the studies comparing the effects of the same training program in men versus women. First, they tried to see whether there were any differences in how men versus women responded to volume or relative intensity, aka how heavy you go, both in terms of how many sets were being performed and in terms of how much weight was being lifted as a percentage of your max. There didn't really seem to be a difference in how men versus women responded. So just on the basis of these findings, it doesn't seem as though women should be training with higher or lower volumes than men when it comes to maximizing hypertrophy. And the same goes for how heavy you go, or essentially how many reps you do. Importantly, when it comes to how many reps are being performed per set, or how heavy you go, there are relatively few studies looking at this. So I wouldn't have a ton of confidence in that specific finding yet. When it came to overall hypertrophy, and you just measured hypertrophy as an absolute increase, men did typically see slightly larger increases than women. However, when increases in muscle size were scaled to the initial amount, in other words, it was expressed as a percentage increase, the increase in men versus women was actually very similar. So while women typically start out with smaller muscles to begin with, their rate of progress, in a relative sense, is similar to men. And one interesting finding from this meta-analysis is that while overall hypertrophy seems similar between men and women, in terms of how much muscle they gain as a percentage, more of that hypertrophy may stem from faster twitch muscle fibers in women versus men. And conversely, more of the hypertrophy observed may stem from slower twitch muscle fibers in men versus women. Essentially, women experience more fast twitch muscle fiber hypertrophy proportionately, and men experience more slow twitch muscle fiber hypertrophy. There's not a ton of data there yet, but that did seem to be one of the findings of this meta-analysis. And importantly, these findings are corroborated by another meta-analysis by Roberts and colleagues from a couple of years ago. Indeed, in this meta-analysis of 10 studies, Roberts and colleagues found that hypertrophy was quite similar between men and women when exposed to a given training intervention. However, interestingly, when it came to strength, the effect sizes actually leaned in favor of women gaining more strength expressed as a percentage increase. So if a woman started out with a 100 pound max and a man with a 200 pound max, the man might have gained 20 pounds on her max from 200 to 20, whereas the women might have gained around 15 pounds on her max from 100 to 150. So while the men on average might have gained 10% of strength, the women on average might have gained 15% of their strength. And that's when they're exposed to the same training intervention. Importantly, this effect size was larger for upper body strength. In an untrained state, on average, men are going to be stronger than women. But that difference in how much strength they have is larger in the upper body compared to the lower body. So potentially there might be somewhat of a catch up effect where that difference in upper body strength reduces over time between men and women as they train. And women actually gain more upper body strength, relatively speaking, than men. For lower body strength gains, the effect size also lean in favor of women gaining more strength than men. As the authors point out, the mechanisms as to why that is aren't super clear yet. If I had to hazard a guess just in terms of my coaching experience, it might be that most men train their upper body pretty readily, like they're all about, hey, let me do some arms, let me do some chest, etc. Whereas women tend to focus a bit more on lower body. And so when in these studies they are actually exposed to an upper body training program, it might be that they've dedicated a bit less attention in the past to their upper body compared to their male counterparts. And so their upper body is a bit less trained compared to men and therefore they make faster gains. Importantly, this aspect I just mentioned of catch up strength gains in women does seem to be corroborated by other evidence too. For example, a Strava Science article by Greg Knuckles points out the following. When you compare the quote unquote worst powerlifters that are men and women, on average, women tend to have around 62% of the strength of men. However, as you go up and up in terms of how competitive the women and men are, the gap shrinks. And by the time you get to the 99th percentile, women are about 70% as strong when scaled to body weight as men are. And so as they grow more trained potentially, that gap shrinks. Once again, displaying the fact that there might be some effect of catch up strength, or maybe women just experience slightly greater strength gains from their untrained state 
to a more trained state. Now I hear you saying, but what about testosterone? Men have so much more testosterone and surely that really impacts strength gains and hypertrophy. There's no way women can gain as much muscle and strength relatively speaking than men. After all, they don't have as much testosterone, right? Well, based on a review of literature by James Krieger, your testosterone levels within the sort of physiological range appear to mostly impact your baseline level of muscularity and not so much how much muscle and strength you gain when training. And so yes, women have less testosterone than men. And that partly explains why men, when they're untrained, have more muscle on average than women when they're untrained. But testosterone within the physiological range isn't going to explain too much of the variance in how much muscle and strength different people gain. And so I want to talk about how men and women really differ and how that impacts how they should train potentially. Because it turns out women are not just smaller men. There are physiological differences here and they do have training implications. But it's not as simple as just saying women don't have as much testosterone. Here are the main differences to be aware of between men and women and how that can impact your training. And by the way, I get somewhat mad whenever I see a training app or a template pitch a program as a woman's program or a male's program, as if to say that the programming needs to be totally different. First, on average, women will have a greater proportion of slow twitch muscle fibers. Slow twitch muscle fibers compared to faster twitch muscle fibers are better suited to longer efforts and tend to recover more quickly. Additionally, women tend to recover a little bit faster from a given exercise or workout, potentially because they have higher levels of estrogen, a sex hormone that might be protective for muscle damage. Because of the differences in muscle fiber types and higher levels of estrogen or just generally greater recoverability for women versus men, it may be the case that women can benefit from slightly higher training volumes expressed as sets per muscle per week and slightly higher training frequencies compared to men. With that being said, at least as far as volume goes, the earlier meta-analysis by Rafalo and colleagues didn't find this. So I wouldn't say there's for sure a huge effect here, but just based on physiology, it probably makes sense. And the final obvious difference between men and women is that women have to deal with a menstrual cycle and potentially also menopause. Now, if you're a woman and you've been on social media a fair amount, I'm sure you've seen influencers claiming that you need to periodize your training to match up with different phases of your menstrual cycle. For example, there are differences in fatigability between the luteal phase of your menstrual cycle and the follicular phase. However, based on my understanding of this area of research and a lot of the research from Lauren Colenso's sample, at present, there is no real evidence to suggest that you need to be matching certain training to certain phases of your menstrual cycle. In fact, to cite her directly, in our opinion, it is premature to conclude that short-term fluctuations in reproductive hormones appreciably influence acute exercise performance or longer-term strength or hypertrophic adaptations to resistance exercise. Notably though, we are missing a lot of evidence in a lot of factors. It might be the case that women respond better to higher reps on average than men or what have you. But ultimately, we are missing evidence in women, and that's a huge gap within the sports science literature. So if you're in sports science, or most other fields in fact, do more science in women. It is probably a good thing to do. Let me give you a few takeaways from this video in terms of differences between men and women and how they should train. There are physiological differences between men and women that have implications or ramifications of training. Specifically, on average, women should probably train with slightly higher volumes, with slightly higher frequencies, so training each muscle a little bit more often each week, and potentially with slightly shorter rest times on average than men. While men do gain more muscle when expressed on an absolute scale, how many kilograms of muscle are being gained, when you actually scale it as a percentage of baseline, women tend to gain as much muscle, or potentially, if you look at the strength research, a bit more than men. Specifically, when it comes to strength, women seem to gain at least as much strength initially than men. And specifically in the upper body, that effect seems to be more pronounced, almost like a catch-up effect. And in fact, the gap in strength between men and women tends to decrease, as was evidenced in the powerlifting data we looked at. Women may experience a bit more fast twitch fiber hypertrophy and a bit less slow twitch fiber hypertrophy, at least earlier in training, compared to men. And finally, you probably don't need to periodize your training to match up with your menstrual cycle. Or at least, from a sports science perspective, there's no strong reason currently to categorically recommend periodizing your training in a certain fashion in alignment with your menstrual cycle. That is the video. Broke down differences in how men versus women respond to training, how differently they might want to train, and I looked at a lot of studies on the topic. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. Let me know down below whether or not you agree with these differences between how men and women should train. 
or did I miss out on anything? If I did, let me know down below. Much of this research we actually did when we were developing MyoAdapt, a training app that is designed to customize program to you as an individual, based on your goals, but also on your biological sex. We use the latest science to inform how MyoAdapt works. For instance, MyoAdapt will provide you with slightly higher training volumes if you're a woman versus if you're a man. MyoAdapt provides you with a fully individualized program to fit you as an individual based on your goals. So for example, you want to specialize on your arms, or you want to specialize on your glutes or what have you or bring up certain muscle groups but you only have two training days a week it will take all of that into consideration and deliver you with a fully individualized program no longer do you need to just rely on templates or hire an expensive coach myodapt is designed to be like a coach but in your pocket at a fraction of the price of most coaches and i'm confident in saying there is no other training app as good as myodapt out there currently so to be notified when it does get released and to lock in at a lower price Check out myodapp.com, register your email, and you'll be notified when it gets released. If you like the t-shirt, t-shirt of Atlas carrying the world, I believe. I'm not a Greek mythology expert, but that is what I think it is. Check out rascalapparel.com. They have a ton of cool designs just like this one, and it's super comfortable clothing to train in. Use code WOLF at checkout for 10% off, and you'll be supporting your favorite professional YouTuber, Mr. Milo Wolf, Dr. Milo Wolf in fact. And now that my wallet is just bursting at the seams from all this money I'm making with YouTube, thank you for watching the video, have a fantastic day, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.